Hey DIYers, I'm George with Alarm Grid. Today we're going to be going over the different kinds of batteries that you're going to find in different sensors. Now, batteries are going to be found in wireless sensors. These are going to be wireless door contacts, wireless motions, glass breaks, fire, smoke detectors, flood sensors. Any batter or any sensor that is wireless is more than likely going to be battery operated. Now, the different kinds of batteries there you're going to find a lot you're going to find some coin batteries you're going to find triple a double a you're going to find the longer um i think they're called the cr 123s i'll show you guys in a second but they're the the they're the shorter and fatter cylindrical shaped batteries um and we actually have a lot of faqs that show you how to find them uh, the easiest thing to do there's two things you can one if you still have the manual you can simply look in the manual the actual manual of the sensor will let you know what battery to use and what not to use the other simple thing to do is to just grab the sensor whatever sensor it is it has a cover you just take the cover off and you'll see the battery right here this one it actually says it on it it's a cr123a lithium right so now you may come across some batteries that are alkaline. The difference between the alkaline and the lithium batteries is that lithium generally lasts about three times longer than the alkaline do. Um, now let's talk about the battery life of these sensors. They do last about three to five years uh, and they actually do let you know whenever they're getting close to ba basically being depleted. So it's usually within 30 days, the sensor will send a signal to the system letting it know I'm almost drained out of battery and then the system will notify you whether if you're being monitored if you're on total connect it'll send you a sh it'll actually show you a low battery error on the panel and if you're being monitored and you have total connect or any other kind of interactive service such as alarm.com that will actually notify you as well on the app that you have a low battery on that sensor and again it's usually within 30 days so that gives you up to a whole month to go to any local hardware store anywhere that has batteries you can just go ahead and open the cover find one of the batteries replace it and then it'll clear the low battery trouble now i say three to five years battery life because some sensors are used more than others right so if you have a door that's constantly being open throughout the day you're going to see that that battery is probably going to run out a lot quicker than the batteries that you find in the window that's rarely opened all right um uh, so that one that I showed you before was a Honeywell was a Honeywell sensor and that actually was a 5816 and it used the the shorter fatter batteries and uh, if you guys do have Honeywell wireless sensors we have a great FAQ for you I'm gonna pull up the uh, FAQ right now it's what type of battery does my Honeywell wireless door sensor use I'm just gonna show you guys a quick glance you can find the link in the video and uh, it's basically going to show you what every Honeywell wireless sensor, what kind of battery it uses. Now, we only have this for Honeywell sensors. We haven't made one yet for Colsys, 2GIG, Interlogix, anything like that. But you're going to come to see that a lot of these wireless sensors do use a lot of the same batteries. So, like, if you have the, the thicker batteries, like the 5816, you're going to see that it used the fatter battery, the cr CR123A lithium. For smaller sensors, oops, let me close that up. For smaller sensors, here I have a Colsa sensor. Yeah, for smaller sensors like these, you're going to see that they actually use a coin battery. Yeah. So here you're going to see this sensor here. It uses two coin batteries. And again, easiest thing to do, pull out the battery. You can take it with you to the store and just look for a matching battery as well. This one's a CR2032 coin lithium battery. Now, again, you can find these at any local hardware store or anywhere that sells batteries. Um, and again, the easiest thing to do is to just open up the sensor and uh, find out what battery it uses. And again, if you happen to have a sensor that doesn't have batteries in it, I don't know what kind of sensor would have that but if you do happen to come across a sensor that doesn't have any batteries in it maybe it's an old sensor left behind by a previous homeowner and they took the batteries with them they left the sensors behind um, you can always look at the manuals the manuals will have what kind of batteries they need and um, 
let's see what else. Uh, the recess sensors, you're gonna see that those actually use the AAA, which are the long, skinny batteries, and uh, some other sensors will use the AA uh, lithium batteries. If you guys do have any questions or wanna find out more about your wireless sensors and what kind of batteries you do need, you can always email us at support at alarmgrid.com. You can just send us images, you can open up the system or open up the sensor for us and we can help you troubleshoot that. Again, so that was just uh, basically a quick cover of all the different kinds of batteries that you can find in the wireless sensors. Um, the easiest thing to do is to just open up the sensor and look at the battery that's already installed. Uh, if you guys, like I said, have any questions, you can email us at support at alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube cha channel, and enable notifications. That way, whenever we upload new content, you guys do get notified. I'm George. I'll see you guys next time.